Okay. All right. Hello. I hope this is working. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to find out. Yeah. <laughs> we're here today with Susan Kalen, who is probably the hardest working collie person in the breed. Every national you go to, she's always the one that's there first thing in the morning, and then she's there the latest at night. She is amazing. She's from Kentucky, and she's Caliber Collie. So she's going to tell us all about her dogs and herself. So tell us the beginnings there, Susan, of Caliber. And by the way, her name is Susan, not Sue. Never call her that. Yeah. All right. Yes, it's always been Susan. My, great, my great-grandmother's jackass was Sue. So. <laughs> so. All right. <laughs> <laughs> tell us all about the jackass now <laughs> tell us about the beginning of caliber and your kennel name oh, and everything how oh, it started oh lord um well it's something i knew i always wanted to do as a kid but uh it really started um because you know it's like how much do you all want to know really <laughs> we've got time <laughs> yeah <laughs> so um, I was a jock, sandwiched in between boys, you name it, basketball, baseball, I played it all. Went to a private uh, girls high school where I was the first freshman to make the varsity squad in basketball, but always knew, like since I was five years old, I was going to show dogs, have the best dogs in the world, and at that time, the world was a city block, and that um, because my father would only let the family have colleagues you know, it was going to be a collie. I would always show collies. So um, fast forward to senior year, we're ninth in the state, um, accepted to pre-vet school, you know, life is looking awfully good. And my knee decides not to support those, um, that opportunity. <laughs> so, so I ended up having my first knee surgery, uh, not going to school to play baseball. <laughs> I always thought dogs were in your knees. I didn't know it was other things. No, it was <laughs> basketball. No. So, so um, then, um, gosh, I was down for the count for a while. And in a cast from my hip or my crotch to my ankle, it was awful. Uh, couldn't drive. After a while, my friends got tired of coming and picking me up and picking my leg up because it was hard to pick up and maneuver, you know? Um, so my mother took me to the Collie Club of Kentucky specialty where, um, oh, what was that trial rough dog's name? Uh, Kayleen's Dark Desperado, one oh. best of breed from the classes. So met some local Collie people and it kind of took off from there. So, um, you know, I ended up, um, I worked full time, went to college all my life. <laughs> So, um, so I was always doing the dog thing on the weekend or, you know, working it around school, unlike Tom who cuts school. So, <laughs> <laughs> so um, anyhow, um, Cookie and David Skeeters, who are now both deceased, they kind of took me under wing. And they started taking me to dog shows and introducing me to people. And there, there I went. So I was hooked. I would show their dogs. And in the process, I was introduced to Sandra Calhoun, Gus Sigrid's daughter, and um, Betty Johnson. And then it got so I would spend my weekends there. And they, um, Sandra became my mentor. So taught me a ton um you know just all about head detail uh could be why that's the way i am today all about you know the structure and how they should look and then finally got me to a point where it was like stop looking at the dogs and look with your hands she's you know because she explained the optical illusion of colors and everything like that so then when we go to dog shows and they would send me out to like go over other people's dogs and report back and tell me what I, what I found, you know? So, so it was like, it, um, they really, I mean, they, they were a blessing, you know? So, um, so when I first got in with Cookie and David, you know, it's 1978 and I'm like, I've, I just got my second collie. 
uh, when I was 16. So I thought I'd try and make him a show dog and that didn't work out real well. Um, and then as soon as I got out of my cast and everything, I had all the Collie Club of America ca uh, calendars. So I found somebody who had a 2Js Enterprise Hanover granddaughter that they bred. So I was like, oh my God, it's that dog. It's that dog. I knew nothing, but I bought her. And then I bred her to my six, my dog that I got when I was 16 years old <laughs> as a birthday gift, you know? Right. And it wasn't exactly, it wasn't, it wasn't a good thing. <laughs> it just was not a good thing. So I decided I needed to learn more. So then here I was with Cookie and David and then got introduced to Sandra Calhoun and Betty Johnson. And since henceforth, my education began. So, you know, and I love that time period because remember when you had to like prove you were going to stay with the breed before people like took you in and started sharing everything. Yeah. You had to prove your, that you were there for the long haul. And I loved it because you know what? I was the person that had to walk everybody's dog while everybody else was still asleep or taking their shower, getting ready to go to the dog show, ice, snow, whatever, pick up everybody's poop. But I got my hands on some of the most incredible dogs that other people only saw in magazines, you know? And it was, it was just like such a, such a blessing. There was one time, um, at Coney Island where we had the, uh, the gathering and people brought families. Um, the, uh, Azalea Hill dogs were there, Mr. Christopher and all them. Right. And Barb Blender had her family and, um, George, the cat is distracting me. <laughs> George, come back here. So, um, and you, they were all in X pens. So you could go around and go over everybody's family, see the family types and traits. And it was just, I never wanted it to end. So those are the kind of things I was exposed to. So sometimes when people start in dogs, I really kind of feel bad for them that they're missing out on that opportunity. I know a lot of people were like, Oh my God, well, didn't you ever get tired of that? And I was like, no, no, because there was always, <laughs> something something new and you know after the dog shows everybody would get together and talk about their breeding what worked what didn't work what they liked what they didn't like and nobody does that anymore so um that's how i got started in fact actually right after uh sandra calhoun kind of took me under her wing of course then there was the big birth of uh the face right uh, yeah tell his name uh, his name is Cherison's Dreams of Kings, and his real name is Rhett, but they called him the face. Yeah. So, yeah, so um, beautiful, beautiful dog. The Skeeters had his sister, Winky, and then, oh, who was the people that had plain brown wrapper? I can't remember their name. Um, but uh, so just to be a part of all of that, and uh nostalgic's paradox lost who was the sire of right. Rhett or the face um yeah, he was always at Saunders' house you know they kept him mike uh, mike resnick was the breeder of him mm -hmm. and he was just a really cool dog and you know so i just had a lot of great opportunities um so at that time i showed under the prefix of sumar my name's Susan. My mother's named Margaret because she, my, my father wouldn't let me drive very far. So she would have to take me. So, you know, it was like, okay, mom, we're Sue Mark Collies. Okay. There you go. So, um, so then, um, Cookie and David had given me a smooth collie, um, that actually she won the working group. And then I sent her up to Judy Evans to breed her to, um, um, Oh, her blue dog. Help me, help me. Light up the sky? Clary, uh, yes, light up the sky. Okay. Mm -hmm. what, was the name, she, what was the name of your bitch? Uh, Sue Mars tried to remember. She was tri-colored. Okay. Yeah. I, guess. <laughs> you know, it's like, I was like, okay, we'll, we'll come up with this. And uh, she didn't take. And then, Had you, you know, seen light up the sky or just pictures of them? 
just pictures. Okay. Just pictures. Yes. Yeah. So, you know, um, it, it was amazing. There was always the big Southern Ohio show in uh, Coney Island, uh, just in Cincinnati, Ohio. And it was a big, big specialty. And so there were always big dogs. You know, that's where I first met Steve Barger, um, who was uh, showing the evergreen dogs. Right. And uh, yeah, so um, just, it was, um, it was just incredible. You know, the um, Hanover Follow the Sun. Um, all of those, all of those old dogs that were just right there at my fingertips waiting for me to close my eyes and go over them. <laughs> so, you know, John, uh, he had just had something on Facebook about the golden age of collies. And uh -huh. I think we're all saying it's like, was the, the late seventies into the eighties. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's right. Yeah. I, I hit it right at the perfect time in 78, yeah. you know, it was awesome. So then let's see. What caliber? I oh, I did have another litter. It wasn't a good thing. <laughs> so, you know, right? You do your five years, you're studying, you're doing all this stuff, and you think you've got it right. Mm, no. no. So I went back to the drawing board, and I didn't breed again for another five years. Um, uh, that the breeding that didn't turn out right. You know, to keep names out of stuff because some of the people may still be alive. I don't know. Um, they, uh, it, it caused some hard feelings, and so I got snubbed, um, which then sent me out to the West Coast. Okay. Yeah, so uh, Caliber, the name got changed when I got married because my ex-husband, who really didn't have anything to do with the dogs, didn't like it that it was Sumar, and he wanted a part of it, and I was like, okay, fine. So the name came from the thesaurus because I wanted something to mean quality. Right. Um, so that's really how the name came about. But then what happened was um, after the last disastrous litter, I started going to dog shows and buying a catalog and sitting there and just looking at the dogs, writing down what I liked, what I didn't like. And then what my eye was always drawn to, um, and it was like, okay, I, I think I got this. <laughs> and, you know, and I would just sit there and write notes. So then I went to the National in Colorado Springs, Colorado. Yeah. And yeah. So, and there I went from really not being in dogs anymore. I mean, you know, I kept the other ones as a pet and I had them spayed and neutered. And, um, but went there and, bought a Sable Merle Smooth Bitch from Karen and Rick Stone of Rock Lane Collies, who's, you know, now they're out of it, but um, the bitch was a Sharan You Smooth Talker You daughter. Okay. And yeah, and so here I was, um, didn't know anybody, and I've got this pedigree that's male bar, Brandwin, Bobby, and male bar this, and male bar that, and I'm walking around going, I don't understand this pedigree. These dogs are all foreign to me. And I'm standing out in the lobby and all of a sudden I hear a Southern drawl. It's Miss Mike Cheatham. Oh. <laughs> and I just, and this is how I met Mike Cheatham. And I walked over there and I said, excuse me, you're from the South. And she started laughing and it's like, yes, I am. She was painting sweatshirts. You know, she wasn't showing a dog. She had a boost painting sweatshirts. And I said, do you mind if I sit with you? I said, I don't know anybody. And I'm looking at this pedigree and can you look at it with me? Because these dogs are really foreign to me, but I really like the bitch and I hadn't bought the bitch yet. Oh, okay. And uh, so that's how Mike and I became sisters. Oh. Sisters. So we've been friends ever since. And so I bought that bitch. And they hadn't had the eye checks done on her, but you know, we went ahead and did the, the contract and all that stuff. And uh, they took her home. And then there was a dog. I also leased another bitch, which was a Lick Creek bitch, because, um, because I'd ran into a lot of health problems. I wanted to, uh, you know, I was looking at the Lick Creek and the, the one bitch, I mean, I was looking at profile, looking at structure, you know, the overall appearance of a dog. And then, looking at the health and thought, okay, so I'd lease this uh, bitch from Janice Reed, who's now 
or Janice Audrey, who mm -hmm. at the time was Dorothy Sturm's kennel manager. Yes. So I leased her. And then while I was there, I found a stud dog to breed to her that I really liked that Bertha Garrison was showing that was a Spice Racks Black Pepper, which was a lot of the old Lick Creek stuff, yeah. you know, Hell's <laughs> Poppin, Merry Rhythm, yeah. all that. Yeah, I forgot so, about the Spice Rack dogs. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so, so then I'm back in dogs. Like within hours, I'm back in dogs. <laughs> so it was, uh, you know, it's really kind of funny how it turns out. And uh, the, I remember Janice Reed, uh, she asked me, she said, do you think you need to talk to your husband? I said, honestly, I think we're going to end up divorced anyway. <laughs> <laughs> and we did. Yeah, so my, my name used to be Kaylin hyphen Moore. So, you know, the, I just dropped, dropped the hyphen in the other part of the name. So it worked out. But um, so, um, after that national, of course, then I pick up my sable merle bitch. I do my breeding, and um, I have um, ten puppies from that breeding uh, from the dog uh, that I leased from Janice that I bred to Black Pepper, and uh, they, of course, they were all rough because I didn't have smooths. I guess I I need to step back and tell you the very first time I brought the smooth home that Sumar's tried to remember. Mm -hmm. My father told me to take it back that I'd been ripped off. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, "There's no such thing. No such thing. You dumb, yeah. you dumb kid." <laughs> <laughs> so um, from there, I picked my one bitch, Gracie. Love this blue rough bitch. And this was a this was like one of my first big lessons um, because an old breeder had always told me that a puppy always comes back to what they were, you know, especially when they're they're line bred like that and you know, or even inbred that, you know, they'll they'll stage and everything, but they always come back to what they were. Mm -hmm. I hadn't seen that yet, you know, so I was basically concentrated in Lick Creek with that particular dog and of course then the the smooth bitch the sable merle smooth bitch i bought was all brand one yeah um so i picked gracie i love her she's beautiful she's obviously the pick she got so ugly now this could be and she got <laughs> just be a stand-up joke nancy susan how ugly was she how, she how was ugly so, was she she was so ugly <laughs> When I decided to sell her and I advertised her in the local newspaper, people came to see her and they told me that there was no way in hell she could be purebred and I was trying to rip them off. That's how ugly she was. Okay, that, that's <laughs> ugly. <laughs> so, I took, and uh, <laughs> it made me mad and I decided I just want, I wasn't going to sell the doll. I didn't know what I was going to do with her. So I fed her. And then, you know, you know how you go out and you take pictures. You're always taking pictures. And then back then you had to get them developed though. Mm -hmm. So I'm taking pictures of the other dogs and, you know, the sable Merle bitch growing up so beautiful. And, and I get my pictures out of my Kodak packet and I'm like, there's this beautiful blue rough bitch. And I thought, Oh my God, who is that? <laughs> <laughs> I had to take the picture next. The dog was laying underneath the grooming table and hold the picture up next to the dog and go, Oh my God. <laughs> so truly always remember everybody. They come back to what they were. Yeah. Sometimes you just have to put a bag over your head and theirs, but <laughs> they come back. So that was basically the start of caliber and all the dogs I have, you know, with the exception of Cooper, uh, all the bitches and everything and the bitches I've bred to Cooper and the dogs I'm currently showing, um, go back to that ugly bitch. What was her name? Um, her name was Grace and her registered name was Calibers Kentucky Blue Grace because you know, we're the bluegrass state. Yeah, I struggle with names in the beginning. <laughs> Did you, show, did you show her? Yes, I showed her, but she never, you know, um, I never, I think I put a couple of points on her, 
but you know, I was always shown against Ben and Joyce Hauser. Oh, yeah. Uh, you know, just, our, th there was a lot of heavy competition in this area at the time. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, and I was not a good groomer. You know, I was, you know, please tell me you shaved your dog's hocks off at one time. Oh yeah, my first one for sure, totally. Okay, good. I'm that doing that right off. Yes. Oh, yeah, that was, that well, was pretty. Yes, and that's what poor Grace had to put up with. So you know. <laughs> <laughs> so I ended up breeding her uh, to. Uh, I never got a thing out of my sable merle bitch. Nothing. And so um, I bred Grace, at least the sable merle bitch's brother, and bred Grace to him. So I merged the brand one in the Lick Creek and took off from there. Okay. So um, then I took, um, what did I get out? Oh, a beautiful blue smooth bitch, which I named Pagan. And her registered name was Caliber's Fallen from Grace. So see, I was getting better with my name. We're getting much better. That was a good one. Yeah. <laughs> okay. And, um, Pagan had a beautiful daughter. Oh. Can you see Chloe? Oh, yeah. 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 And um, she piled. Oh, so, you know, it's like, please, please cut me a break. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's a tough game. It's a tough game. And what uh, my first uh, working group, Smooth, what she taught me was. Um, not to put all your eggs in one basket. <laughs> so, so, you know, I've always, uh, I kept Pagan's brother. And everything, basically, that I have that goes back through Grace goes back to Pagan's brother. And um, from there, I went back to Karen and Rick Stone. And I leased a bitch from them, uh, Rock Lane's, uh, Sharan's Rock Lane's Stepping Stone. They were already, they moved to North Carolina. They weren't showing anymore. And Rhonda was just kind of sitting there not doing anything. She was like, okay. She was an eight year old bitch, but she was in good health and eight? had never had a litter. Eight. Yeah. Eight. Oh, okay. And so, so we brought her and I got two beautiful blue smooth bitches, Alexis and Rachel that, um, I bred and then I ended up taking uh, offspring from them and breeding them together. So I started developing my, okay. my look type. Yeah. So uh, in that way. So, and they both finished. So who was, and, the, who was the first caliber champion? The first caliber champion was Pagan. Oh, okay. Yeah, Fallen from Grace. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, I never, I never had a, had an Eve or a, uh, you know, uh, unforgiven sin or whatever, you know, a mortal sin or something like that. I always said I'd do that to the nuns being I went to private school. <laughs> um, so, hmm. Was there one particular bitch that you considered to be your, uh, your foundation bitch? The weevil. The weevil. The weevil. Okay, so the weevil came from um, Rachel which uh, Rachel and Alexis, uh, Rachel was, um, oh God, what was Rachel's name? <laughs> you know what, it just slipped right out of my head. Okay, what was uh, the Weevil's name then? And maybe this will circle back to that. <laughs> <laughs> um, Caliber's little sister. Oh, okay. And she was um, the father. I read Rachel to, um, I went up to Joyce Wyman's, you know, because everybody loved Randy and they loved Mr. And I thought, I'm going to go to Joyce. So um, Rachel and Alexis were in at the same time. And then I had another sable rough bitch. You're looking at the crazy person that bred three bitches at the same time. Mm, that's good. Mm, yes. Single, working a full-time job. Yeah. 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 Oh, and I traveled with that job. Of course you did. I worked, I worked in Chicago and I lived in Kentucky. <laughs> so... Uh, so I'm like, and I've read three bitches. Yeah, I was, yeah. I was younger then. Yeah. <laughs> I had more energy. Mm -hmm. Um, so I went to Joyce's and the sable bitch, I bred her to Mr. And she missed. 
but there was another Mr. dog there. Say Mr.'s registered name in case any, somebody doesn't uh, know. Venice Midnight Express. There you go. And Randy was Venice sculptured in blue. But there was another tri rough dog up there that as I'm walking down the line of kennels, I just fell in love with this dog. I stopped and looked at Joyce and I said, who is that dog? And she said, oh, that's Casey. Now, Sue Lee would know who Casey was because Sue Lee showed him and finished him. And he was expression in black. And that's who I bred Ray, uh, Rachel to. And I got the most incredible, beautiful litter of puppies that I was just like, it was, it was perfect. And that's where the weevil came from. Okay. So weevil, I consider weevil to be my foundation bitch because she was like, by this time, oh my gosh, had I been at it for 15, 15, almost 20 years. And I'd finally gotten a bitch that, and she was tri, a tri smooth bitch. So I could breed her sable, I could breed her blue. There were so many, you know, a plethora of opportunities. And I thought, this is the bitch. She had really pretty head detail. She was normal eyed, a little bit more open eye that I wanted to, you know, put a better shape to. Mm -hmm. um, and I never showed her. And I never showed her to, because she was so pretty. Um, an acquaintance of Dr. Greathouse was going to buy her for a large money. And I thought, all right, I'll keep the runner up bitch. I've still got the genetics, right? Okay, but. She ran down my deck steps, fell through the hole in the steps, and broke her leg. Oh, my gosh. And then, and then the vet messed her leg up with the cast. And so I never showed her. And, of course, then these people didn't want her anymore. Right. And she became my brood bitch. So the very first breeding was out of my control. Um, I had gone on vacation, and Nigel, who was um, from Rachel's sister, Alexis, and um, her registered name was Caliber's Double Trouble. Um, he, uh, and I bred Alexis to a gemstone tycoon son. And that's how I got big black trust dog. Everybody should have a pride and prejudice in their kennel, right? And name him Nigel at all. So he chewed through his kennel and then chewed through the kennel that I had all my bitches in seasoning. <laughs> four of them nancy four of them <laughs> so <laughs> another another good plan breeding right there you go oh yes yes yeah. and so um which you know when i bred alexis and rachel the one thing i forgot to tell you those two bitches a week apart one had 11 puppies on th one thursday and the following thursday the other one had 11 it was just like who has 22 puppies at one time Nobody. it was crazy so but anyway so Sorry for jumping around, but I just remembered that. <laughs> um, Nigel bred the weevil, and I had to sit and wait because I didn't know who he bred. I got the panic call. I cut my vacation short. I was down in um, um, Tampa, and um, yeah, I came home and saw the destruction <laughs> of the dangling <laughs> fence. <laughs> you know? The only the other problem was is one of the bitches was his sister. And I'm like, God, who did he breed? Right. So, <laughs> so I took and uh, it ended up being the weevil. <laughs> and uh, so it was a try to try breeding, which, you know what, I never would have done. Another lesson, don't look at color. I don't look at color anymore. So um, from that breeding came Karma, uh, Champion Caliber's The Secret of Life, who is the grandmother. She produced caliber's uh serendipity a blue smooth bitch that um i bred to a memphis uh son memphis uh, oh mary landis is going to be but uh, I, I know i can see it but i can't yes i know really? um i know debbie price is going to get me yeah and he's beautiful <laughs> <I>? shoot <laughs> Now we're in trouble. Mm -hmm. Yes, we it'll are. Come. It'll come. We're yeah, pretty it'll, it'll, So, um, maybe. <laughs> so that's how I got Arabella, who was serendipity. I then bred serendipity to Camlock Sophistication, who produced the tick. And the tick, 
champion calibers who makes you tick rom is the dam of uh, filthy rich uh, you know bread cooper produced filthy rich and go digger and all of these really beautiful bitches that i've had in the past 10 years so nice. um so that all just kind of like really worked out well because then I took my Lick Creek brand one blend and then started going out into the parader when I went with Casey or the Venice dog, uh, expression in black. And then, um, uh, so that's what I was working on in my bitch line. And it was interesting because I really didn't have a strong dog. Everything was all bitch. I had a bitch line, not a dog line. And I would always keep a dog from the bitches. So when I got a couple of generations back, I could come back and breed back to that bitch. And so that's what I did with the weevil. Um, so I consider the weevil my foundation bitch because consistently after all these years, I had a bitch that was producing the virtues that I wanted. Um, she was very clean and skull and, um, you know, other than a larger eye, uh, which you know, I've, I've corrected that and put a prettier eye shape. Cooper really helped with that in putting a prettier eye on the dog. Uh, so uh, I also bred the weevil to the preacher man. And I bred the weevil to um, Mary Landis's dog that she got from Debbie Price. Memphis. <laughs> Memphis. Yes, Memphis. Oh, Mary. Don't kill me. Why am I? Why can I, like I need to Google something right now? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh, well, I was getting ready to like private message Lisa Schmidt and go, right? Where what was me? This name? <laughs> I'll race you. Okay. Well, um, so tell me who was, um, who was your first uh, CCA winner? Oh, gosh. Karma. I mean, as far as, as not a winner's dog or winner's bitch, it, it was just like a really, really big thing. Memphis um, Blues, right? It was. Yes. Uh, yeah. Midnight Blues. Midnight Blues. Wasn't it Midnight Blues? Oh, I don't know. I thought you were Googling. <laughs> um, anyway, back to, back to your CCA. Okay. First so, CCA, um, as we know what a big it was um, is. under Joe Reno. Oh. And, um, Yes, in um, um, oh, we're was it Wisconsin? Uh, the he did the bitches. He did bits of, bits uh, bitches in um, his first national assignment was in Mich no, not Michigan, not Minnesota. It what was the kind of was one of those states. And it was the um, the hospital, or not the hospital, the no, you just came to the Mayo Clinic. That was you know what? Yeah, it was the Mayo Clinic. No, that was a different. Well, no. <laughs> here, here we go. We're so, going. On, we're never going to go on a tour. You know we're going on tour. Let's see. It was Rochester, Minnesota, April fifteenth through the nineteenth, two thousand and three. Oh, it was Rochester. Okay, I'm wrong. I uh -huh. can. It's okay. So. Um, Anyhow, um, I won the brood bitch class. You know, I was, um, every, everything I brought um, took second in its class. And um, Joe really liked this one bitch, but she, um, there was a child jumping down the metal bleachers mm -hmm. and making this noise and like threw the bitch off. And, you know, that didn't work out too well. <laughs> but he told me later how much he loved her. And then in the brood bitch class, Karma won the brood bitch class. Oh, yeah. And uh, Kizzy was, and um, Kizzy, who was, you know, named after the um, Alex Haley slave girl. And her registered name was from a horse. I know that surprises you that I bet on at the racetrack that is probably mm -hmm. still running. Uh, her name was Minority Le Leader, and she was a trustman bitch. So uh, really pretty, very, it was like, that's when everything was coming together. Everything that I got down from the weevil, as far as, you know, the neck, the presence, the, the head detail, the type. So um, it was, that was a really exciting national for me. So that was 2003. And then um, 
then Wendy in 2009 when she was winner's bitch and best of winners. Um, and Wendy's, Wendy's registered name was? Oh, yeah. Wendy's registered name. Yes. Cooper's mother. I'll, I'll remember that one. Okay. Uh, champ, <laughs> champion Holly Oaks, a perfect storm at Caliber. So, uh, and it's kind of funny here. Gray's picture just popped up on Facebook uh, oh, yesterday okay. yeah. because her father was Kimberly's after the storm. Right. Uh, and she just, you know, everything I loved about that dog, because the one thing, I think now when you look at my pedigrees, you see like this big mishmash of families. Mm -hmm. But what I started doing was breeding to families. I got away from the, the, the line breeding and having to stay in families. And while I was like trying to put my ideal collie together, I started looking at the families that were strong in uh, the type that I wanted you know like I wanted big round muzzles and and pretty stops and you know and so it was like okay so you went to I, I went to gray you know and um you know preacher man when I bred to him it was like wow the other thing that I've always done is I gotta let everybody else go ahead of me um all the dogs I've bred to they've been old men yeah, which sometimes it's not good, like when they run out of sperm, because Pat Caldwell's Tyler, when I was trying to breed to him, um, he ran out of sperm. So <laughs> it was that much too long. <laughs> yes, you know, but you know, um, Preacher Man was nine and a half when I bred to him. Mm -hmm. um, Fortune Hunter was nine and a half when I bred to him. Oh. And yeah, and it was like, I would sit back and watch to see how other families were blending with that dog to see, to try and, and make the best informed decision I could mm -hmm. to get what I wanted. So yeah, um, sometimes it took me a while and then I'd be too late, but it really, it really kind of worked out for the best because then if I would see things that I don't like, then, you know, then I wouldn't breed to them. I do the same thing at the national. And I think, you know, in conversations we've talked where I've been binge watching the nationals, um, going back and sitting there with my catalog and looking at the dogs and looking at where they came from and seeing, because I'm trying to figure out, I've got some inbred Cooper daughters where I'm going, going to take them. And so I'm going back and looking to see what dogs have produced and where they're at because now different people have done different things. It's hard to track them down through the, the kennel names and stuff like that. So um, I'm, uh, I'm shopping and doing it that way because then I can stop the recorder and go, oh, I really like that dog. Or, or you can stop them in motion and go, oh, yeah, I thought I saw that, you know? <laughs> right. So, so yeah, it's been, uh, it's been good. I've been uh, in my free time now that, you know, coronavirus is here and I can no, work remotely. We're not speaking of that. That's not <laughs> no. <laughs> so tell, us, tell us about how Cooper came about. Uh, Cooper came about because what happened was I had, um, I, I brought Lee Reynolds Gray over here to breed to him. And I was breeding, um, my preacher man, my trust me, preacher man daughter uh, okay. from the Weevil. Her name was Raven. And, oh, you're going to ask me her name. It was Caliber something. <laughs> I ended up never getting anything out of her. She, she missed. So before I sent Lee's dog back, Lila Williamson was like, well, would you mind if I read to him? And I was like, no. I said, you know, the money will help pay to ship him back. Right. I'm fine with that, you know. And so then her dog got pregnant and she said, well, would you rather, would you take a puppy? And I was like, well, it depends. I said, let's wait and see what's there. Mm -hmm. And by this time he's already back. And I thought, well, you're already out the money. So let's just wait and see because you wanted something from that dog. Cause I love gray. Um, so I waited and then Lala's uh, bitch had puppies and Karen Shaw, uh, one of Lila's friends, went over there and took pictures when they were born. 
And Nancy, the minute I saw that picture of Wendy, I, I got on the phone. They emailed them to me. I told Karen she was still at Lila's house. I said, I want that picture. When, and, she, was a, when she was just a newborn? Yes. Oh, well, because what, what was she that? had everything. She had that roundness of muzzle. She had that finish. The stock was already there. Look at me all. <laughs> and it was just, it was beautiful. And, uh, you know, Lila liked the two sable merles. And, and I said, well, you know, that's fine. You get first pick. I get second pick. I told you I'd take second pick. And, and that's fine. I want that blue rough bitch. And so then um, I met them. Lila brought the puppies. They were like three weeks old. We kind of had like some kind of picnic thing. I got to see them again. And I told her, I said, I still want that blue snake bitch. That's the one. And she said, oh, my God, she's too doggy. She's too much this. She's too much that. Blah, 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 blah. Are you sure you don't want this tri bitch? And, you know, and she's like, because she had ranked them. And Wendy was her fifth pick. Okay. And I was like, no, I want that blue rough bitch. I'll take my chances. And so I ended up with the blue rough bitch. Smooth. Uh, yes. And yeah, the smooth one. Uh, blue smooth bitch. Yes. Thank you. You're and so um, it's, uh, and it's kind of interesting because, you know, she never became more bitch. Everybody thought she'd be too doggy. She'd be this, she'd be that. She grew into what she was, you know, she didn't become more. So, um, so then I had Wendy and then it was like, okay, Wendy finishes and it's like, okay, I need to figure out who I'm going to breed her to. And, um, it's looking around at different dogs and, you know, Wendy's headpiece and her, her chest and her shoulder and everything was beautiful, but you know what? Her rear was awful and her top line was soft and all while I showed her, I road worked her to keep her in condition. Mm -hmm. But, you know, it's, it's good to know your dog's faults. Yeah. So I was like, I've, I need to keep the head qualities and the front, but I got to improve that top line and that rear. And so started looking around and then lo and behold, Fortune Hunter shows up from Japan and he's at the Collie Club of Indiana show. And I was like, oh, my God, you know, um. Mary Landis's boyfriend, David Schutz, was getting ready to go into the ring with him. And I'm coming up from behind and all I saw, from, here's his nine-year-old dog, and all I saw was his rear. And it was beautiful. <laughs> I was like, oh my God, he's nine years old. Look at that rear. He goes around the ring. Top line is beautiful. I'm like, oh my God. <laughs> so, you know, but there's a lot going on. So I just like didn't do anything that day. And then the CC of A uh, in Pomona in 2010, mm -hmm. he was there in Judge's Ed. So, uh, and actually the, the tick was there at six months of age. So, you know, it's like all the, all the timing of all of this merging together was really cool. Um, so I did Judge's education mm -hmm. and Fortune Hunter was in there. And then I got to go over him. And it was like his head was smooth and clean. And there's just something about him. He had a presence. And then I got to like go over the dog and it was like, wow, I love this dog. So, you know, I start working on Debbie Holland. I want to bring to this dog when Wendy's in season. Well, when, when's Wendy coming in season? Well, I don't know. She's only, she's just a little over a year old. Heck, I know. I don't know. And I normally don't breed a bitch that young. And she said, well, he's going back to Japan in June. Oh, but, oh, great. Right. So Memorial weekend, Wendy comes into season. And so Sally came to get her dog, but Debbie talked her into letting me have him for the weekend. I introduced him to White Castles, by the way. There's my claim to fame. Uh, they like, <laughs> all right. <laughs> you love White Castles. Um, and so, we here, so I don't know. <laughs> We met and I picked up uh, Brett and he stayed with me for three days on the, um, and it was, it was awesome. I mean, the dog was like royalty. He just had this aura about him and I loved having him here. He's just a really cool dog and Karma, who was like my alpha dog every, every time he would come back in the house because my kennel is like a 
big dog care daycare thing he would come back in and he'd get on his pillow but as he went past karma he'd lift his leg and pee on her <laughs> so you know he's just such a guy yeah. so uh, so then um he had uh blood in his semen you know he had uh had um some kind of urinary tract infection the chances of me getting puppies was like slim and none but right. uh, and debbie you know disclosed all that and she said you know susan she said i don't know if this is going to work i said you know that's okay she's a year and a half i i can do other things with her but this is what i want to do with her and um uh, oddly enough you know wendy never conceived again but yep. lo and behold yeah never again uh, so uh because i read her to louie uh who else i read her to somebody else never conceived so uh, she has six puppies. Uh, all, I, all I wanted was another blue smooth bitch. That's right. all I wanted, Nancy. I got uh, two blue rough dogs, a tri rough dog, two sable rough bitches, and a sable smooth dog. Damn the luck, huh? Right. Damn the luck. <laughs> and that sable smooth dog was Cooper. But it turned out so. Okay, so. Yeah, yeah, it turned out like. And yeah. so there, my lesson going forward was, um, you know, um, I don't look at sex anymore when I pick puppies. I don't look at color. I look for the best one. Right. I don't walk into a room with a predetermined, this is what I want out of this. I look for the best one. People ask me, well, what are you going to keep? And just like, you know, with Wendy being Lila's uh, fifth pick and my first pick, you know, a lot of people need to realize that just because you know, they have to have second or third pick or else they don't think they're going to have the best. People choose differently for different reasons as to what they're looking for and where they want to take their kennel and, you know, what they correct, their interpretation of the standard. So you shouldn't get so bent out of shape about it, you know, yeah. that something really great might have been gotten overlooked. So. Or being the wrong color and the wrong sex. Absolutely. Yes, exactly. Exactly. So, you know. So um, Cooper is, was obviously extremely pivotal to you. So, but what made him stand out? What was, and, and what did he always, what did he stamp his get with that made him such an amazing producer? God, he was such a game changer. Yeah. You know, like, I know that people would contact me and say, I saw a Cooper puppy today. They'd be on the West Coast or something. They said, oh, looks like him. Um, Cooper had that same presence like Fortune Hunter had that it's just the, the kind that just gives you goosebumps. Um, he stamped his look on all his puppies, um, the bone, the bone and the substance. I love the bone and the substance. Um, he would like, I hate loose lip lines. It's like, and stops, you know, it's like, I got to have a pretty stop and I have to have a tight lip line. And mm -hmm. oh, yeah, I have to have a pretty eye. And, oh, yeah, you know, I want finishing muzzle and I want under jaw. You know, Cooper had all that. Oh, so and you wanted it all, all, is what you're saying. Yes, I want yeah. it all. Just, yes, yes. Okay. yes. Okay. Okay. You know, the thing that I would have faulted Cooper on, you know, because I've got my three strike rule. Um, you know, um, Barb Lender used to tell me since I was 18 years old, they all have holes. She was my reality check. Uh, when I would talk about, well, there's this and there's this, and she'd look at me over her glass of wine, something about collie people and wine, and go, <laughs> kid, they all have holes. So, you know, they all have something wrong with them. It's just, what's the, how much are you gonna mm -hmm. put up with? Or, you know, so, um, yeah, when, when we get down to three faults and I can't keep them, you know, they need to go be somebody's pet. Um, but the thing I would fault Cooper on was I would have made his upper arm a little bit longer. Mm -hmm. But, you know, the the chest, the layback, all that was there. The I just love that dog. I love what he's given me. You know, after he died, it was the hardest thing walking into my backyard because anybody who comes to this house, it's like, there's all these little Coopers looking at you. You know, um, I've got his daughter, Ingrid, which is turning out to be a beautiful producer for me. And what's her registered name? Uh, Filthy Rich, Caliber's Filthy Rich. 
and um, she looks the most like Cooper, um, like eerie, scary, like even today, if I just glance out the bay window and I'm seeing her move across the yard, it's like, whoa, I got goosebumps. So um, I have bred her three times. Uh, the first breeding I bred to Joan Johnson's Billy, and that's where I got my fraturity winner tank, Diversified Investment in 2016. Billy was, Billy was State of Mind? Blue Ridge? Yes, State, State of Mind. Mind. Yeah, Blue Ridge State of Mind. And out of that breeding came five champions. I mean, just beautiful, consistent. And it was like, okay, so now here's a total outcross that really, like, you know, just really blended beautifully. Well, Cooper, and, Cooper himself isn't, isn't a, was an outcross, right? Uh huh. Yes. Cooper, yeah, okay. But yet another outcross. So yeah. again, I think that whole family, when you breed to families strong in the type that you're looking for, it reproduces itself. Right. So yeah, Cooper was preacher man, fantasy. Mm -hmm. There's a flash of, can of uh, Clarion back there from Ray Hokinson's dog. Um, then there is, uh, the Kimberly dogs. So it's kind of like, you look at that pedigree and go, what? I don't so, think I've ever seen this pedigree now that you're saying it like that. I, I, I'm sure I, mm -hmm, no. yeah. Hmm. So I don't, uh, you know what? I do have one hand. I, I'm sure you do. <laughs> She was told to have this stuff handy, people. Pictures, pedigrees, come on, Susan. <laughs> I know I failed. <laughs> you know what, it's all, can you see this very well? um back it up a little maybe no it's was not you know, it's, it's not super clear on my end so i don't yeah I don't be able to okay. see that one, but yeah i mean it was just like you know what we'll do we'll post it after on the um okay. and we'll post okay. it on facebook so everybody can see it okay yeah because um you know so many people like when i bred wendy to fortune hunter people were like what are you doing but I'd already le learned my lesson. Don't look at coat line. Don't look at color. Look for virtues. Right. Look for families that are producing the virtues that you want. I knew when I bred to Fortune Hunter that um, I wouldn't lose the skull. I mean, at nine and a half years of age, his skull was so beautiful and so clean. Mm -hmm. And then there's a strong rear on this dog, this nine and a half year old dog. And I thought, I'll take that risk. You know, so uh, I love that dog. If I could have bred to him again, I would have. But uh, Cooper, that litter ended up being Fortune Hunter's last litter. Mm -hmm. So, and what's really cool right now and what I see is uh, Cooper's daughters are really producing well. Filthy Rich, you know, she was the dam of 2019. Yeah, 2019 winners, bitch and best of winners. Uh, Tut, the uh, rolling in the dough. A stable bitch. Uh, she produced a 2016 Paturity winner. I had some beautiful puppies out of her again, bred back to Splash, Cooper's son, mm -hmm. that I was bringing to the 2020 National that uh, I hope everybody will get to see. <laughs> <Today. laughs> we all hope to get to see everything. <laughs> but it's been really cool that, uh, you know, I have two litters right now. Uh, the other one is sired by Bitzer, Cooper Sable son that was the bred by winner in 2019 at the National, and he is Caliber's golden child, out of Filthy Rich, bred back to Cooper. And um, he's not finished yet. No dog shows to go to, but, you know, he's a big dog. Um, I love the head detail on the dog. You know, a lot of people, because he's such a big dog, he's still pulling himself all together. He's only a year and a half. Uh, he has a ton of bone. He has great, great feet. I uh, have to have pretty tight feet. I don't like those long toes and all that. Um, the lip line is gorgeous. The head detail, the stop is right in there. In fact, Janet Hitt talked a lot about the beautiful head detail on him. And he has angles. He's got angulation. 
and the top line is beautiful. So I've got his puppies and I'm thrilled with what I've seen. I bred him to Singe, who uh, Singe is uh, Grand Champion Caliber's Dirty Money. Mm -hmm. And she is from uh, Cooper, bred to um, the um, Galatean, um, the Marys, uh, River Road Galatean Sparks Will Flame. Okay. Um, yeah, uh, we leased her, bred her to Cooper. Uh, Jay Affy got a really pretty uh, Sable Rough bitch. And of course, I took the Tri Smooth bitch which uh, something with my tri smooths, they always have these round eyes and you just have to ignore them while they're growing. <laughs> I mean, you know, the head pulls the eye sets in, it's got this beautiful eye shape, the finished product. Mm -hmm. And um, Jay had taken the entire litter for the Marys to, to see. So Marys don't kill me for saying this. And they all hated my puppy. Again, I picked Singe from a picture. When Jay was sending out pictures cause she was whelped down in Florida, um, I was like, I want that trust me, bitch. I have to have trust me, bitch. That's my bitch. Cause I got second pick being the sperm donor. Right. And so, so I had to have that trust me, bitch. And, um, uh, everybody hated my trust me, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> So in 2015, when she was winner's bitch and best of winners, Mary Robichon, she came over and she pulled up <laughs> and she's just staring at Singe and I, and I hugged her and she's like, you know, we all hated her. <laughs> like, <laughs> no, she said, you have to teach us what it is you look for when you're picking your puppies because you know how they develop and families do develop mm -hmm. differently, but don't pass judgment on my tries <laughs> with their baby. <laughs> Just ignore their eyes, you know, which is really hard to do because I'm going through that right now. I've got a couple of tries and it's like, oh, those eyes. And it's just, I'm used to it. I know it, but yeah, you, you just have to set it out and ignore it and, and pick them from, you know, as long as the head detail and the structures there, eyes are going to be fine. But you know, just the ignore my trust eyes. They're awful. And then they grow up and they be pretty. <laughs> and you've been able to um, inbreed on Cooper um, uh -huh. a fair amount, hey? Probably because, again, he has a looser pedigree, so you can tighten up on uh -huh. him easily, right? Yeah. And you've had Which is, really good luck with that. Yes, yeah. That's where Nut Nut came from. Splash, is that coming through okay? Yeah, that is. There's, there's Nut Nut. Yes, not, not. That's a champion, our grand champion now, Caliber's Money Laundering. And um, he's got uh, two, three, four litters on the ground. Okay. So, um, yeah. Um, Where did White Splash come from? Because your dogs normally aren't. I have no idea. Okay. None. None. I mean, <laughs> Just um, stopped up. <laughs> and yes, and I did the breeding. So, and I have a separate, like all my, because I'm out in the country, all the bitches in season, when they're in season, uh, I have a privacy fenced in area within the privacy fence. So no dog or coyote will get to my bitches in season. And then when I'm off at work and all the other dogs are out in the covered kennel area, the bitches are in the basement. They're in the walkout basement. I did the breeding. I don't know where that white comes from. <laughs> it's one of life's mysteries. Um, right. you know, and um, now Singe does have um, like a break in her stifle with white, mm -hmm. but yeah, I have gone through my dogs and looked and where is this coming from? <laughs> and I, I do not know where that came from. Okay. Now there are two puppies in the litter bred to Jordan, and Jordan is um, out of a Cooper daughter bred to uh, Cooper's Blue Rough brother. And those puppies are marked like Splash. Oh, okay. And, but they don't have that white zigzag going across its back, wherever that came from. <laughs> so, so right, um, you know, I've got that, these two, um, these two breedings, which the really cool thing is like, there's 
all my bitches coming down from the early 80s. Mm -hmm. And that's where Jordan is from. And so I've read Jordan Desplash, who is Cooper and Singe. And What's so Jordan, Singe, Jordan's registered name? Did you tell um, me you're gone already? A mil, no, no. Uh, a Caliber's A Million Reasons Why. Okay. Yeah. Nancy McDonald Banger. Oh. So, yeah. And uh, so that's bringing the the three or the two bitch lines and Cooper. Of course, Cooper is a common denominator through all that now, but it's like bringing my, my bitch family together into one puppy. So it's going to be interesting to see not only, well, they all look the same. Everything's very typey. I'm very pleased. I'm sitting here going, crap, I want to keep them all. Um, but uh, it's interest. It's going to be interesting to find out how they produce, right. you know, so I'm excited about that. And then the other litter is Singe bred back to Bitzer, the golden child, who is okay. Cooper and Ingrid. So again, it's bringing my two families, my two bitch families together with Cooper. So um, a lot of the same type and they, they do look very much alike. And, you know, the, the head details there, um, the bone, little tree trunk legs. I love my tree trunk legs. So... Perfect. And then the puppies that I had for the national were Ingrid bred back to splash. And I had uh, Cooper's last litter uh, while he was alive. That uh, was Cooper bred to Mia and Mia was a repeat on filthy rich. Okay. So, yeah. He's now out in California in a pet home, but you know, she, uh, produced really, really pretty puppies. Mm -hmm. I just, you know, like everybody else, we're waiting on dog shows. Yeah. Um, someone <laughs> asked, what would, they, what would you consider the single most important trait in the dogs you keep in your kennel? But I kind of think you've already answered that with the, yeah. with the head detail and the bone and the stuff. Mm -hmm. and, and what can't you, what can you, you, and you don't like lip, lock, bad lip lines. So is there anything else that you cannot, take in a dog that you keep um uh, temperament personality oh. mm -hmm. yeah um the house it's it's a huge like i said a doggy daycare here um all the dogs i tell them you know before i leave for work of course they're in their kennels outside under cover but i tell them love and take care of each other and play nice <laughs> um, <laughs> so um they all they all have to get along my i've got two acres behind privacy fence and the only part that is sectioned off is the bitch and heat yard they all have to get along i can run stud you run dogs all your males together too absolutely wow. and it was you know when uh, when cooper or splash or his brother would be breeding a bitch you know at first i was like oh we're going to see how this is going to work i swear nancy they were going out high fiving each other <laughs> go off and play and I thought okay oh, man. But, um, <laughs> yeah all the girls boys run together um the puppies because I orient my dogs to are the puppies to big dogs so they learn how to interact with big dogs not to be afraid of them but don't be obnoxious puppies and jump all over them and you know act stupid like right. some puppies can um about five and a half weeks we start walking the property line together mm -hmm. and uh I mean, all the dogs are just great with them. It, it's like you would think they all gave birth to every one of those puppies, that they're theirs. They walk along. Nobody gets stepped on. Um, people that have come to the house, I think they've been in amazement that I can do that. Now, I don't leave the littles out with the big dogs, but, you know, they come back in. We walk the yard and come back in, but I'm also teaching them how to be house trained because my walkout basement is my indoor kennel and everybody comes in at night and everybody's house trained because I don't want to be cleaning my basement and stinking up my house every day. <laughs> um, so, um, so yeah, the, uh, they're really cool. And like yesterday, no, what is today? Today's Friday, Wednesday. What a terrible migraine headache. And all the dogs were loose in the field playing and doing all their stuff that they do. The puppies were downstairs asleep. And I just thought, I'm going to lay down for a minute. I cannot get rid of this headache. It was 5.15. I didn't wake up till 8.30. All those dogs 
we're loose running playing together mm -hmm. yeah so it's that that temperament is critical and you know i don't i don't want to have to most separate yards i, I don't want to have to exercise dogs um you know if you don't have the collie temperament and you can't act like a collie <laughs> go live someplace else so that's that's really that's really important to me is that they all get along and it makes my life a little bit easier because i'm normally when i'm not working remotely up at five o'clock to get out the door by seven o'clock and i've got anywhere from a 45 minute to an hour and a half commute to work one way so you know and then i'm not back home until 7 30 and somebody's out here to let the dogs out at lunch and exercise them and so i don't i don't want to put up with that yeah it's everybody's got to get along there, oh. there's enough stuff to irritate you why in the world why, <laughs> yeah, don't need exactly. that. why have something in your house and feed it and spend money on it and let it irritate you it's a good thing i'm not a mother huh <laughs> Bye bye, kid. <laughs> You're going up for adoption. Yes. Right. Right. What? So, what qualities of the breed, as we currently see it, do you feel most needs to be improved upon right now? So, talk about the state of the breed overall. Do you think? Oh gosh, you're asking the person that's been binge watching the Nationals. Yes, yes. So that's a that's a very good question that was sent in. So there you go. Hmm. As you're pretty up to date. Yeah. Well, I'm up to. It looks like in 2013, we started losing our substance and our angulation. Just when you look at the overall, like the very first thing that hit me when some dogs would walk into the box, mm -hmm. it'd be like, oh, oh my, you know, because like in 2010 and 2011, there was the substance and this beautiful angulation. And, and if that, like you look at the dog and go, wow. And there, the substance has not been there. And the, I, it's just, I started noticing after I was watching each year, I started one after the other. And it's like, wait a minute, where's this gone? Mm -hmm. And uh, down back skulls and full and stop, like boomerang heads, you know? Mm -hmm. I was like, boomerang, <laughs> you know, for, uh, it, been and, and you know and like I'm the worst critic of my dogs I sit there but that's also how I focus and figure out what I'm going to do I sit on my my hill and while all these dogs are running around the yard and I just watch them watch them move watch them stop you know just like catch them at different angles and go oh I love that and go mm, what is that where'd that come from and you know then you're going pouring back through the pedigree trying to figure out where it came from um, so yeah that's that's just some of the things that that i noticed that i was you know really surprised with and it really made me concerned not not just for a breed but as somebody who's looking to outcross i mean i've got a i've got some good ideas um of uh, you know where where i want to go next i think i told you my one great idea fell through when i was contacted buddy morris to breed to preacher oh. man again because i thought how perfect would that have been to take an inbred cooper daughter back to his great great grandfather and bring that, that one was beautiful you know but what? he just what? <laughs> what he destroyed all the sperm yes so if anybody <laughs> if anybody watching knows many available preacher man sperm let me know. <laughs> i think you'd have to get in line i don't know <laughs> Oh shoot! <laughs> talk about your puppies and how do you start training them? Because I know when you take babies to the national, sometimes it's their first show. I think the national was Cooper's first show, right? Yeah. And no, he actually he finished at the national. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. So well, somebody um, came, somebody came to a national was their first show and they did well. Uh, and the, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, so uh, your, pup, your puppies have a lot of self assurance. They walk in yeah. the building and they do really well. What what do you, yeah. do you have any little tricks or tips for people? I make my dogs run errands with me. And we, we go close, Home Depot. I look for the um, the um, forklifts in the next aisle and I make my dog stand and show in the aisle next to the forklift where it's going beep, 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 and oh all the rat people, yeah. Uh, so, you know, it's, a, it's 
some of them, it's kind of overwhelming for them the first time, but I just keep at it. Mm -hmm. um, I know the, the puppies downstairs right now, they're eight with sewed and they're already learning. Well, they know in on a biscuit because how do you bring six puppies in from two acres? You know, in on a biscuit works. They're already food motivated. That's good. Uh, but they have to stand and take the biscuit from me. I don't put them on the ground. So they, they're learning how to watch already. Uh, normally, you know, when we have dog shows, they go to dog shows with me. But um, yeah, Tractor Supply, Lowe's, Home Depot, they're my go-to places. And you know, do you, have, do you have any handling classes where you are that you get them to? Or? No, oh, okay. no. I wish we did. Well, you know, I take that back. Um, Linda Gouin, the uh, Sheltie mm -hmm. handler and breeder, she has some in Versailles, but it's around her show schedule. So oh. we might all get together maybe four or five times a year. Mm -hmm. But no, that's it. Okay. There's no, uh, there's what there used to be, but you know, I guess like a lot of clubs, the numbers dwindling, the volunteers are dwindling and you know, things, God, I feel like an old lady. Things just <laughs> the way they used to be. <laughs> what the heck? What the heck? You know, somebody was talking about what is, what are dog shows going to look like post Corona? What do you like? Do you have you put any thought into that? Do you think we're going to see an uptick in entries, or are we just going to? I I I don't even know where to go with this one, but I'm curious to see other people's yeah. thoughts. You know what I'm concerned about is that coming out of the gate, these clubs to to try and get their shows that were canceled on the the calendar, is that. We're never going to find a major because these clubs are going to sit on top of each other's weekends and it's going to spread it too thin. Yeah. Or so, the clubs might have had to go under during this time because. Exactly. They, yeah. I, that's, you know, that's we, another thing. We could, yep. we could, we could see more entries and less and less shows. Mm -hmm. Or we like said they're going to just go on top. Yeah. Well, and as far as the, the dogs, it's been interesting because it's like people are now at home and it's my phone and my email. It's like, everybody wants to have a puppy. Now you're, you're or an adult dog because they're home. They've got time to train it. Mm -hmm. They, you know, they have nothing else to do. And so I wonder if we won't get more people interested in. Okay, that's, that's a thought too. You know, but of course, you know, I'm weeding through some of them. I did have somebody two days ago that uh, they never had a dog. They've got two cats and they decided they wanted a smooth collie. And I was like, okay. And, you know, you have the conversation. Why? What? You know, blah, blah, blah. What's your house like? Uh, and so then they said, well, what do you know about border collies? How do they compare to a border collie? And I thought, oh, you don't want a smooth collie. Right. You know, and so we explained, I explained how, you know, a border collie has to have a job. They're a little bit more intense than a collie. <laughs> and um, we go back and forth. And I said, and the size is different, markedly different. I said, border collies are smaller than collies. And so they said, well, how big are your dogs? And I said, oh, about 75 pounds. And they wanted a male. I said, well, let me send you a picture of the father. And you've seen Bitzer. I'll send them the picture of Bitzer in the ring at eight and a half months old at the National. And they're like, Oh, beep, beep. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, he's a collie. And so I got a text today. Hey, thanks for talking to me. We went to the shelter and picked up a dog. So, you know, um, I think people, you know, everybody's life has changed because of this. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe, maybe it's taken them all back to the basics. So, we're all spending more time at home with nothing to do but stare at our dogs and get really deep into the details on them, right? Oh, so I know. My dog's facing it. <laughs> <laughs> I was up till midnight Tuesday night, probably where I got the migraine headache from, combing oh. dogs out, doing nails and cleaning teeth. Mm -hmm. And they're like, don't you have something better to do? Well, no, now that you mentioned it, I don't. <laughs> right? <laughs> you are the topic of my... You know. <laughs> do you have anything final you want to add here that we that you wanted to talk about that we forgot to talk about oh gosh you know um 
I think, uh, oh, there was something about the best advice I've ever received. Oh, right. Yeah. Yes. And, um, you know, and I touched on, uh, don't be too quick to move your puppies like Gracie. They always come back to what they were. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, that, that is true. Um, how, uh, sometimes markings and stuff can be deceiving and maybe you should let your hands be your eyes. Mm -hmm. It, uh, and it's amazing what you feel when you're not looking. You know, like when stop actually, where stop actually is in reality, you know, and where you think it looks like it is. Right. Um, the, um, the other thing about, you know, what I did with uh, my catalogs and studying dogs and at the end of the show is going back and uh, finding out, you know, there, there was at the end of the shows, I would realize that there were certain dogs certain lines certain families that I was gravitated to but I do have to tell you a funny story um my, at Colorado Springs you mm -hmm. know when I got back in dogs right um I had my catalog I'm watching the show in the Broadmoor with that god awful brown and gold carpet <laughs> that really screwed up everybody's gate <laughs> <laughs> so anyhow um like marking my catalog, studying dogs, writing more stuff down. All of a sudden, this hand comes over my back from the bleachers behind me and said, who is that dog? Snatch, they weren't my catalog. Yep. Guard your catalog, guard your catalog. Yes. Because then the person looks up who the dog was, then she starts reading my comments. Then she flips to the next page. Guard your catalogs if you do that, guard them. Because <laughs> that person was Isabel Ireland. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I was like, no, no, give me my catalog back. <laughs> anybody, anybody but Isabel. <laughs> That's awesome. So, yeah, so yes, guard your catalog. But yeah, and it's been really cool because then you can go, go back, you know, 10 years from now and look. And, you know, the interesting thing is seeing that the families kept their virtues mm -hmm. and it's also interesting to see how you've grown and how your eyes grown and you know what you've learned so that, that's really interesting isn't it because you it it's is. pretty different from 20 years ago than it is today right mm -hmm. yeah so what is 78 from 2019 how long I don't want to do that thank you I don't okay no math no math good I'm not <laughs> <laughs> thanks for asking that. <laughs> So I can't think of anything else. Can All right. You? Then I think this has been fun. It was fun. It was, Thank at you. least for you and I, we'll have fun. Hope other yes, people really. enjoy it. Yeah, we'll see what everybody else thinks. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, thank okay. you so much, Susan Kalen. We appreciate you doing this. And we'll thank uh, you for asking. Yeah. And we'll put other pictures and stuff up when we put it on Facebook. So, okay. All right. All right. You take care. That's good. Okay. Okay. Bye bye.